Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Tonight, for a short little video, I want to take you down a tour of memory lane, looking at some second generation digital devices for ham radio. Now, the first generation was RIDI, radio teletype. They used actual machines, the old teletype machines, and also terminal units and little things like that that would make the RIDI machines work with the radio. Technology that dated back to World War II and before. Well, then a company called AEA, Amateur Electronic, uh, no, here it is, Advanced Electronic Applications Incorporated came out with this box right here. This is a PK-232. The 232 um, was based on the chip that it was made out of and uh, it's basically a little uh, computer. Uh, there's a place on the back where you can hook up a terminal. The kind of terminal used back then was an ASCII terminal and it looked like a computer but it wasn't. It uh, just uh, would send and receive ASCII characters. Uh, ASCII being the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, which by the way is the code upon which the internet was built, but has been, now the internet has been modified to accept other character sets, like uh, Chinese ideographs and uh, the Korean alphabet and whatever, whatever is there, it's available in one of the international alphabets. Now, this was the computer. This is the important thing to understand, and this is what separates out the second generation equipment. This is the computer, okay? Now, you can take a computer like mine and uh, bring up a little terminal program, hyperterminal or something like that, and make it behave like an ASCII terminal and then connect it to this and uh, type the commands in. You do a lot of uh, single letter commands and all that, and they're all listed in a very thick book, uh, things that you have to do. Uh, this is serial number 30116, which probably means serial number 116, uh, from AEA, model PK232. This would do several modes. First, and most important, it would do RIDI. And did a very nice job with RIDI, but what it did for programming convenience reasons was that the tone separation was 200 hertz instead of 170, which is the standard. I once wrote to the ARRL and said, shouldn't the standard be 200? Because this thing is much more common than real RIDI machines and they're all 200 and since most people are using 200 we should make that the standard well they wrote back and ah, you can't do that i can't do that so, uh it's still 170. but it had a little tuning indicator right here you would connect the back to the radio there is this really weird connector uh on the back that you just can't get it was actually a a direct to the chassis connector. So for me to use this, I actually went in there and soldered some wires, input and output for this thing. Let's see, one of these is ground, one is push to talk, one is uh, audio in, one is audio out. And there are other things that you could do to uh, set the thing up, like if you wanted to do direct FSK or something like that. On the front, it would tell you what mode it was using. And the modes that it had on offer were uh, RIDI, uh, PAC, or, uh, AMTOR, which is an error-free form of RIDI that has a very rapid exchange of information with uh, uh, the uh, terminal unit on the other side. Uh, PACTOR, which was quite an improvement over AMTOR, and which I did a lot of. Um, and there was also, let's see, what else have we got? Packet. It would do packet. Uh, it would do Bodo as the RIDI. Uh, it would do ASCII. You could send ASCII code back and forth. And it could also send Morse code, act as a Morse code uh, machine. Uh, again, if we're using the ASCII terminal on the thing. 
Um, the little tuning indicator, you had to tune the signal so it was right in the middle uh, there. And here was a level control. I've actually got this one wired past with just a resistor because I had trouble with it. Um, and you could control up to two radios, so radio one, radio two. And you could actually do both radios at the same time. You could do packet on one, say your VHF radio, and do RIDI uh, on the other. It was a very nice little machine. Sold for a couple hundred bucks. And I got one that had a mailbox built in. So if you were using it on packet on uh, VHF, uh, someone could connect with this box, leave a message in the mail, check their mail, and then I could come later and check my mail and so on by using the terminal to uh, check into the box. It was quite a breakthrough at the time. There were lots of articles in QST and so on and so forth. I haven't found a date on here, um, but uh, it was actually manufactured in Hong Kong, so AEA was going so far as to make these uh, uh, overseas to keep their prices down. Now, mine was destroyed uh, in a lightning incident, and so I sent off to PK-232. I'd had it repaired for lightning once before, but then they said they didn't make them anymore, and they wanted me to buy this, which they gave me a deal on. This is the DSP-232, and it has a somewhat different architecture. Unfortunately for them, the architecture turned out to be incomplete. It did about the same thing that the other box does, but did it a little bit differently, and uh, had the same kind of computer connection on the back and so on. Now they recently, and by recently I'm saying within the last five years or so, uh, by the way, the company was bought out by TimeWave. Uh, TimeWave is still with us and uh, makes a variety of products, including an updated one of these, but then not this. However, you can get the upgrade kit for this, which I got which includes a daughter board that includes a lot of connections here, which include connections to sound card in. It does not have a sound card in here, no. You have to connect this to an external sound card, like that little tiny one I showed you the other day. And then you could set all your levels and things like that. And they have more standard connections. These are the uh, little round connectors that you can stick in here, one for radio one, one for radio two, one to do direct FSK. Uh, and then they've got this up here so that you can run your sound card outputs and inputs through here and for isolation reasons. Basically what they've done is put on a daughter board some little audio transformers and things like that. Now, my understanding is that they have an even newer version where they have the USB connector in there. But this no longer appears on the TimeWave website. This, however, does. And for like $550, something like that, it's quite expensive. Now, my question, though, to TimeWave is, what is the relevance of this box in today's world? Everybody does sound card modes. There's nobody, you can do RIDI with uh, FL Digi and a sound card. Um, nobody does ASCII anymore. Uh, very few people do packet, and they don't use packet one. They use packet three, which is, or four, which is uh, available only through a company in Germany that has a dedicated modem for it that costs over a thousand dollars. Nobody does ASCII, uh, so none of the modes that this uh, generation 2 device used so much are in common use. The device doesn't do, uh, it does packet, of course, packet is still around, uh, but it doesn't do PSK31 or FT8 or anything like that. Now, it has on here the um, isolation devices, so you can use like that little sound card I showed you the other day, This little sound card right here, you can use this with your uh, rig 
this is called a sound adapter, but it's actually a sound card. And you've got your in and out here that you could connect to the back of this, but why not just get an, an, an F, uh, a signal link USB for $135 instead of paying for one of these. So although these are still alive and kicking, I don't quite get the, the use case for them now. Everybody does sound card modes. The third generation modes were the sound card like uh, PSK31 and uh, so on. The fourth generation modes are your uh, JT modes, uh, the ones like uh, FT8 and um, JS Call and things like that are your fourth generation modes. Now, um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a look at what these things look like. I have these brought out so that I can play packet with this. It's a box that I have that works with packet and so does this other one. Uh, that would be the use for it. Packet, in spite of hitting its heyday 25 years ago, is still around and there's still a packet network in place for message forwarding. There are bulletin boards and things like that still around, including one up on the top of Water Dog Mountain, which is uh, not very far from here. So there you go. There's your little bit of ham radio for the day and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please take a look at decastler.com support for different ways you can help fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.